This video includes a paid sponsorship from NordVPN, but I'll talk more about that later. Reuters just shared a bombshell of an article claiming that Cybertruck deliveries are being held hostage by battery production hell. However, is Cybertruck production really being limited by 4680 battery availability, or is this merely clickbait? Follow along as I dive into the details of this article and also discuss an update given in this article about Tesla's dry electro manufacturing specifically on the cathode side. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. As others have pointed out on x.com, the premise of this article really isn't accurate and is more clickbait than anything. In addition, as Jordan from The Limiting Factor pointed out in this x.com post based on the way that some of the manufacturing processes are described in this article, quote, the authors seem to be fundamentally clueless or have an agenda, and that quote, it sounds like the authors are talking to janitors or security guards that heard something in the break room. However, despite the title being a little bit clickbaity and some of the inaccuracies in how the battery manufacturing processes are described, overall, I think that this article is worth discussing and there are a few nuggets um, that I believe are helpful. So let's dive into this Reuters article, starting with the article's premise that the Cybertruck production is being held hostage by 4680 battery manufacturing. As a reminder, Tesla plans to manufacture somewhere around a quarter of a million Cybertrucks per year once fully ramped up, which is not likely to happen until sometime in 2025, but even that somewhat small volume of Cybertrucks will require somewhere around 340 million 4680 batteries per year, which is equivalent to between 30 to 31 gigawatt hours. Now, when you compare 30 to 31 gigawatt hours of batteries per year to some of the expectations that Tesla set back at their battery day over three years ago, that number seems a little bit small. But if you put it in the perspective of their Gigafactory in Nevada, where Panasonic makes 2170 batteries for them, that factory builds batteries at a rate of around 39 to 40 gigawatt hours per year. So 30 to 31 gigawatt hours is quite a bit of production from a new factory, but it is taking Tesla a while to get there. Nonetheless, though, they are making great progress, especially recently there have been some great reports with production increases at Gigafactory Texas and with a 10% energy boost with their new second generation cyber cells. This portion of today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Whether you like it or not, your online activity is constantly being tracked by many of the websites that you visit and your location is not private when browsing. However, when you connect to the internet through NordVPN, your location is masked and your data is encrypted so you can avoid being tracked while browsing online, whether you are at home or connected to a public Wi-Fi connection. Now do be aware though, all VPN services are not created equal and can slow down your connection speeds. However, NordVPN is nearly twice as fast as the next VPN provider, so you can browse safely without sacrificing speed. And since they have 5,900 plus servers in 60 countries, you can experience a fast VPN experience pretty much wherever you are, and they allow you to connect up to six devices at one time. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. Also, don't worry, it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. With that being said, this Reuters article claims that Tesla is currently producing enough batteries to build around 24,000 Cybertrucks per year which according to my calculations would equate to an annual run rate of just under three gigawatt hours. While that number is somewhat small and very likely out of date, as I will discuss shortly, as Sawyer Merritt pointed out in this x.com post, Tesla is clearly not producing Cybertrucks at a rate of 24,000 per year right now. So to claim as this article title states, Tesla Cybertruck deliveries hostage to battery production hell, that's really not an accurate title because Tesla's Cybertruck production is not being limited by 4680 battery production. 
The real question is how quickly can Tesla ramp up from the roughly three gigawatt hours per year run rate that they uh, possibly are at right now to the 30 plus gigawatt hour per year rate that they will need to make 250,000 Cybertrucks per year. Well, the good news is right now, Tesla's 4680 battery production based on everything we know, should be far ahead of Cybertruck production because we're just at the very beginning of the ramp of the Tesla Cybertruck. And as well, it's important to note that as you manufacture a product, um, further on during the manufacturing ramp, you usually hit somewhat of an exponential curve where the growth rate just starts shooting up very quickly. And I believe we are very quickly approaching the start of that exponential growth curve for the 4680 battery production. One good way to illustrate this is if you look at how long it took Tesla to build their first 10 million battery cells at Gigafactory Texas, which according to my estimates took over 262 days or so. I mean, you compare that to the 117 days that it took Tesla to go from 10 million battery cells to um, an additional 10 million built to 20 million battery cells built at Gigafactory Texas. You can see that that time is drastically shorter, less than half the amount of time that it took to get to that first 10 million. So that growth there was substantial. And it's very possible that Tesla is able to build quite a bit more than 85,000 battery cells per day right now, because not only is it several months past the October update, but also when you look at that 117 days and that 85,000 plus battery cells per day, that's an average during that 117 days. And almost certainly Tesla improved from day one to day 117, and that's just the average. That average is going to be skewed based on the lower numbers at the beginning. So at the end of that 117 days, again, in October, Tesla was very likely building more than 85,000 cells per day, and right now, they're very likely building quite a bit more than that. So in this Reuters article, when it claims that Tesla is building enough 4680 batteries to build 24,000 Cybertrucks per year, if you have 1,360 battery cells per Cybertruck pack, which is what is claimed in this article, that equates to around 32.64 million battery cells being built per year or 89,425 per day. That number is of course very close to the per day average of Tesla going from 10 million to 20 million battery cells at Gigafactory Texas. So I personally believe this means that that number is old information that Tesla is way beyond 89,000 plus battery cells being built per day at Gigafactory Texas, and that that number is actually somewhat old now. I personally believe that Tesla is building over 100,000 4680 battery cells per day as we sit right now at Gigafactory Texas. In addition, Tesla is currently working on opening more battery production lines at Gigafactory Texas because according to Drew Baglino, at the time of Tesla's Q3 2023 investors conference call, Gigafactory Texas had two of the initial four 4680 battery production lines in operation. In addition, based on Drew's estimate, it looks like the other two initial battery production lines that are not currently producing batteries could be producing cells by mid-2024. In addition, Drew made mention of phase two of their battery plans at Gigafactory Texas, which apparently involve adding four more production lines at Gigafactory Texas. So it looks like in the somewhat um, near future, in the next few years, there will be eight battery production lines at Gigafactory Texas. So if Tesla does have four battery production lines running at Gigafactory Texas by mid 2024, and the existing two lines ramp up quite a bit between now and then, Tesla should have plenty of enough cells to keep up with Cybertruck production through 2024. And if Tesla does add four more additional battery production lines in phase two of Gigafactory Texas, it doesn't seem logical that Tesla would not have enough 4680 battery cells to build 250,000 Cybertrucks per year. With eight production lines running, each line would only have to produce somewhere around four gigawatt hours of batteries per year to meet the amount of batteries needed to build those Cybertrucks. And that number, um, of course, seems very low per production line because the original plan was for each 4680 battery production line to produce somewhere around 25 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Maybe their plans have changed and each production line is going to produce less than that, but I believe it's going to be far more than four gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So Tesla should have plenty enough 4680 battery cells to build as many Cybertrucks as they want to, which appears to be once again around 250,000 per year. Hopefully that number goes up. 
but that's what Tesla is aiming for right now. Now, in addition to that, this article also includes some information about Tesla's progress with manufacturing the cathodes of their batteries with their dry process. Now, in short, as a reminder, Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process eliminates all of the liquid solvents normally mixed with the active anode and cathode powders and instead uses a PTFE binder, which is a chemical name for Teflon, to adhere them to the metal electrode foils. This eliminates the need for drying ovens, and drastically reduces the amount of factory space and theoretically the time it takes to manufacture batteries. But theory does not always equal reality and Tesla has had some issues with their dry electrode process when it comes to mass manufacturing. According to Reuters sources, although Tesla manufacturing battery anodes with their dry process is not problematic, unfortunately, they are still struggling to manufacture the cathode side of their batteries with a dry process. This article makes clear that the dry cathode manufacturing process does work fine at lower volumes. But at higher volumes, in this article it's claimed that too much heat is generated, which melts the PTFE binder and apparently leads to a quote, big chunk of gooey mess. If this is indeed the case, this kind of heat problem would obviously restrict the speed of their manufacturing with the dry process, at least on the cathode side. And in this article it's claimed that manufacturing cathodes with their dry process is not proving to be faster than producing batteries with the wet process. With that being said, while Tesla is having to work at a slower pace on manufacturing the cathodes, which once again is slowing everything down, um, this article does claim that the cathode scrap rate is down to, quote, as low as 10% to 20%, which while that number is still somewhat high, it is encouraging that 80 to 90 percent of the cathodes are usable and not being scrapped. So this process is working and hopefully Tesla will figure something out to make this work at a faster pace. But it's also encouraging to hear that at least in small volumes, the dry process is working on the cathode side. Um, and it's very possible that Tesla is indeed using dry cathodes um, for their new cyber cells. Tesla hasn't come out and said as much. But there have been a few clues that kind of make it appear that way. And this is something that was mentioned in a post by Jordan from The Limiting Factor on X.com, where he referenced things that people were told during Investor's Day and for a comment that was made during a Monroe Live YouTube video. But nonetheless, there is no official confirmation. And I still don't know if that is the case. But based on this article and based on those past comments, I believe there is a strong possibility that Tesla is manufacturing the cathodes of their new cyber cells with a dry process. Now, beyond the cathode scrap rate, there was an encouraging metric here about the actual finished cell scrap rate. And apparently that number is down to around 5%, meaning that only around 5% of the battery cells being produced on a productive line are being scrapped. And usually this scrapping happens at various parts of the testing when they test the battery cell and realize that there is some kind of malfunction in that battery cell and then that gets recycled. Um, a battery cell goes through various tests and then it goes through a formation process and that weeds out um, defective battery cells before they're inserted into a battery pack. But if that number is indeed 5%, that's pretty solid and that's very encouraging. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Remember to check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. I will put this link in the video description below. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.